Today, I'm thrilled to have Steve Saparito here with me from Melbourne, Australia. With several decades of invaluable experience, Steve has become one of Australia's most sought-after portrait studio training consultants. Originally an accountant, Steve's love of photography made him seize the opportunity to purchase a portrait studio and embark on a new career. One studio soon turned into three, and Steve's career shifted again to training studio owners and employees using his highly successful systems. For the past few years, Steve has been busy creating successful portrait selling spaces across Australia and New Zealand, having opened and designed over 30 studios for his clients. His training is helping both home-based studio owners and large retail studio owners to deliver the highest standard of customer service possible. He has trained his clients to consistently achieve $3,000-plus average sales, thus resulting in them earning million dollars a year turnovers from the comfort of their own homes. Steve's biggest strength is in understanding people and what motivates them to desire and invest in photography. His method lies in creating studio systems that honor the client's desire for beautiful and meaningful portraiture that they will cherish for a lifetime. His training empowers the confidence to learn how to engage, service, and retain your clients with a strong, client-focused attitude. So a big welcome, Steve. It's great to have you here with us today. Are you ready to get excited about photography marketing? G'day, Nigel. Yes, I'm super excited about um, photography marketing. I live and breathe it. It's awesome. So today's topic is all about how to make more wedding and portrait bookings and how to make a better connection with clients before you ever get to photograph them. So let's dive right in. You work with professional photographers to help them design and build profitable studios. As I mentioned in the introduction there, you've done that over 30 times already. Yes, many, many times. What would you say are the top qualities that you see in the typical successful photographer? I think primarily a a photographer that is client-focused and is there to serve their clients has to be one of the most successful clients that you know when I take on a client the biggest shift for them is shifting the focus off themselves as a photographer and what they want out of a shoot and realizing that the client's perspective of what they would love to have and their experience is the key element to the entire experience for them. Originally, when I start, I think with most photographers in, in training them, they believe that the client's experience starts and ends with the, with the photographic shoot, whereas I shift their mindset to believe that this is a total experience and that that experience starts from that first initial contact that they have with their client. And that has to be representative of the experience that the client wants, not what the photographer wants from the very beginning. So I think it's a huge mind shift for a lot of photographers because they never see that, well, from my experience with with when training people, they don't tend to see all the phone calls leading up to the photographic shoot as part of that experience. And to a lot of clients, it's even more important in getting them ready for their photographic experience. It's funny you should say that because a lot of the times I see, for example, in some of the Facebook groups where you've got people who are maybe fairly new to photography or perhaps they've been in a business for a while and it's just not going well for them. And they say things like, I showed up to a photography session in the park yesterday and the client showed up in the most horrendous clothes or they came at the wrong time, that they came with more people than we expected or some of the people didn't show up. I'd say, well, (laughs) did you explain all this to them? during the pre-portrait consultation, oh, I didn't do that. This is the first time that I met them. Yeah, that's the issue in that they think that they need to meet with them at the at the shoot and, and start all that education from that point on. The education needs to start well and truly from the very, very first phone call. And I think a lot of photographers hide behind email. Mm -hmm. They prefer to communicate with their clients by email. But I believe that photography is a personal experience, um, emphasis on the word experience. And the only way that a client can feel comfortable with their experience and their photographer is to experience their photographer as much as they can before the shoot. So then they can be comfortable, they are more likely to get excited about their photographic shoot and the whole experience. If they've met the photographer and they've had some sort of connection with them, and I think that's one of the biggest things that stops clients from booking or they're hesitant about is that they're not comfortable. They want to build a relationship with a photographer because it it is a personal experience for them and they need that interaction. 
over the phone. So with my clients, we really focus on creating excitement calls for them rather than an inquiry. It really does need to be an excitement call because when you think of an excitement call, it's very, very different to an inquiry and it's very, very different to a confirmation. A confirmation call is basically done just to see whether they're going to turn up or not. And if you're in the mindset of that they're not going to turn up, then more than likely then they're not. And even if they physically turn up, their mind hasn't. The most successful photographers and, and, and the most successful photographic experiences seem to happen when we've engaged, say it's a family shoot, we've spoken to mum, we've spoken to dad, and if we do have grown up each children, we also speak to them on separate phone calls to get their perspective on the family, where they fit in, what their loves are, what they love the most about being part of this unit. I think that once you begin to do this, it begins to awaken their senses and change the way that they interact on the lead up to the photography session because you'd be amazed at how many parents haven't been able to hear the messages that their children have been sending them because life gets in the way and life is just so busy that um, they don't stop to look. And once we start doing the excitement calls and, and really ask them some questions about their family, they begin to realize, hey, we just don't know each other anymore. So when we do these excitement calls, really what we're doing is, is we're beginning to re-associate fa- re- associate the family and beginning to get them to realize what's important to each of them. And for some of these parents, it's the first time they've stopped to listen. And for the children as well, they've been doing whatever they're doing and it's all become quite routine and they've forgotten what are some of those expressions that they love the most. Or they've forgotten to stop and just soak up their two-year-old as he's playing with his blocks and in his little land of make-believe and just stop and watch him because we've asked them, you know, what are some of those those expressions while he's doing that? The next time he's doing it, they'll, they'll stop and look. And it's amazing when families come in, they just have this energy about them because the next time we call them, they said, oh, my God. He did it. I stopped and I watched and it was it was just amazing. I can't believe I haven't stopped and looked at him for, you know, for, for well over a year now. So it's quite transformational. And I think that to run a successful photography business, we're no longer selling photographs. We are selling an experience. And I think that we need to be focused on making a difference in people's lives and in families. Because I don't know what it's like over there in the, in the, in the US, but over here in Australia, families are, are quite, I suppose, disconnected with the busyness. You go to a restaurant and it's not uncommon to see the kids with an iPad in front of them or parents with their iPhone and iPad being social on social media, but forgetting that there's somebody there in front of them that is really crying for some attention. It's very much the same over here, actually. It is? Probably more so, I would say. An odd phenomenon for somebody like me who grew up in the late 60s and 70s to live in a world where everyone is all connected and ignoring the people around them. Yeah, they're connected and social, but they've never been so disconnected yeah. possibly in their in their whole life. And I think understanding where people are at and, and realising that and making a stand for people and and making a stand for families and really going about this photographic experience. I mean, for me, photography has given us permission to enter people's world and it's given us permission to ask the sort of questions that most people don't really believe we're going to be seriously asking. So, you know, you go to and meet somebody and somebody asks, you know, how are you? And you give your standard response, oh, I've been busy or I'm good, but nobody's really listening mm-hmm. and, they, and they don't expect you to listen. So, At first, clients are quite taken aback that we've asked a question and we're actually listening to their answer. And it's really, for me, when I'm training photographers, one of the biggest hurdles is getting them out of a mindset of what I have to say and into a mindset of having a conversation and actually listening to that person and being able to actively listen and engage and explore what's been presented and listen to what they're meaning and not so much as to what they're saying because along the way they'll be testing to see whether you're on the same wavelength of the, as them, whether um, they're going to be embarrassed by where they're heading. So they'll sort of 
lace in a, a few comments in, in the conversation and wait for you to react. And in most conversations that they have with people in the world, nobody reacts to anything they say. So they've always given up being heard. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that want to be heard and want to be seen. And photography gives us permission to allow people to experience that and feel important again. This is a very interesting approach to photographing families and, you know, I'm sure that this applies just equally well to weddings and engagement sessions and, and all that kind of thing in that, you know, photographers will pride themselves on telling you that they are storytellers, that they are there to capture your personality and the essence of who you are and all this kind of thing. But more often than not, what we actually see happen is that they default to this mode of getting caught up in having to capture the photographs in, in the sense that, well, I, oh, I've got to get, you know, 10 good ones out of this or 20 good ones out of this or this person's not doing what I expect them to do and so on. And then they forget that they're actually supposed to be observing the people they're photographing and capturing the real nuances and the subtleties of what's going on in the communication between the people in the photographs. Is, is that a fair assessment of what you were alluding to? Yeah, I think you're, you're right. I think that a lot of the times when photographers say they're, they're capturing the essence of someone, they're capturing the essence of somebody through their own eyes, which is the only eyes they have, but it's with their own limitations and their own fears and their own blocks. So their interpretation of reality is through their own mask, their own glasses, and we don't tend to look at things from a client's perspective. We try to interpret it through our own. And I think to be a, a true artist and to really understand a client, like you said before, the client the client turned up in that forum in, a, in inappropriate clothing. Well, what if that specific clothing had some sentimental value? What if their father passed five years ago and it was something that he absolutely loved to see her wear? And she felt as though she wanted to be connected to her father throughout the photo shoot. And that was a representation of him, but she couldn't have him in the shoot. But because we never bother to ask or find out that there was a dad or that the dad has passed and that she wanted to incorporate his memory in her photography, what if that clothing that the photographer you mentioned interpreted as being inappropriate. What if it had meaning in that sense? And we've, you know, that's an actual case that I'm talking about where we've talked to a high school senior because I'm, I'm doing some training in America as well now. And, you know, she wanted to incorporate um, her dad in some way and he had passed a, a year before. And most people were saying, oh, you know, grab a photo and have a frame and get her to hold it. And it's like, well, she just wanted to do something that reminded her of him and what they loved to do when they had alone time. And that's and you know, that's one of the questions we ask. What do you love to do when you get alone time with whoever it is? What are, your, what are some of your favorite things? Well, their thing was going out for pizza and buying pizza. So part of that shoot was focused around having pizza and, and her enjoying this pizza. And the girl was just so blown away by that whole experience that she could actually share a share that with somebody and had somebody ask her those sort of questions uh, whereby she could relive those memories of her dad i think it, it go, just goes beyond taking a photo these days we need to be aware of what's in front of us and be respectful of it and and really get the client's perspective it's difficult when i'm training photographers they, they have their field they have their rock they have their park that they shoot in but what if the clients don't fit into that environment or their lifestyle doesn't fit in i think that we need to listen to what the clients who the clients are personally and then create an environment that would showcase that personality because I think that as an industry we, we tend to go the opposite way we have our time our our field our our special place that we love to photograph in and then the clients have got to fit in with that but my belief is that the environment is just not important at all it's irrelevant what's important is that interaction that connection that they have with each other that electricity knowing that when she feels secure the most secure is when he he brings his hand up behind her neck and plays with her lobe with his thumb and just zooming in getting that detail shot everything else is a blur anyway so it's really understanding people to that level that i think a books clients and it books quality clients and i think people are out there believing that clients will come and that clients are out there that every single person out there is your client clients are made they're not found. So once you put them through this experience or they've started this journey and this experience, it's amazing how many clients that were not 
photography clients for a lot of other photographers suddenly became an amazing client because of the way we approach them, our ability to listen and the excitement call. These clients loved what we did so much that they'll often spend five, ten thousand dollars on photography, yet you know, six months or a year ago they had another photographic session and barely spent a hundred dollars. That's incredible. That really is. That's amazing. So we've talked a lot about some of these pieces, if you like, of this whole client acquisition model. You've mentioned things like excitement calls, which is something that a lot of people are probably not all that familiar with exactly what that is and all that kind of thing. So can you describe the kind of process that photographers who follow the model that you advocate go through to acquire new clients? That whole booking process, if you like. In a lot of cases, clients will email or or they will call. I know in Australia that if I, when I'm training somebody, that, that when they tell me the market's saturated and that there's so many photographers in my area and we just can't make a living because there's so many photographers and they're all so cheap and it's so competitive. Does anybody ever say that to you in, in passing? Is it Only all the time. Only all the time. Okay, so it's pretty similar. Yeah. So when I ask them for a list of photographers, they'll come up with three or four and then I ask them for more. So maybe they'll come up with 10. If I are able to extract 20 names of, or 20 20 different photography businesses that they believe are competing with them. There is quite a large percentage of them that don't have a phone number listed on their website. And then those that do it, when I ring every single one of them, I'd be lucky if I could get one person to answer their phone. So in general, it seems that photographers don't like answering the phone here in Australia. Now, I haven't done any any testing. Um, I'll do that when I'm in the US next time. I'll look up on the internet and, and just start calling when I'm over there next time. But it, it just seems that we are phone averse. So your first, you know, line was, you know, when we pick up the phone. Well, the first thing is we need to pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. And it's scary for a lot of people. It really is because they're not used to picking up the phone. And what if it's a client? What if it's not a client? Um, what if they ask me a question that I don't know about? All of these fears run through their head. And then when people are emailing, I've stopped looking at the forums because it just frustrates me so much. You know, there's all this dialogue of, well, this client rang and, had it, and they asked me, do I do digital files or will I come to their place? And this this whole dialogue that seems to last for days before they'll, they'll pick up the phone and talk to the person. I don't know how much we need to torture ourselves with all of the stuff that could go wrong before we ring up the client to find that, hey, they're actually a nice person and they just need to be educated on how to buy how to buy photography because they're just reaching out to find out what it is we do and how it works so i think the first struggle is picking up the phone um, and understanding that email is not a personal enough experience to create valuable clients because clients are made not found so there's a lot of i think well no i know when i'm training people it really is difficult to get them out of the habit of relying on email so they might be responding to emails um, that come in or or somebody's called and they prefer to email that person rather than call them back. So speaking to somebody is, is, is the primary thing. To convert them into a great client, it's more about asking questions that are obviously open questions, but lead them to an emotional sort of response. So in some cases, we need to set up a scene. So then that way, our clients understand in what context they need to be answering. So if somebody rang and said, hey, I've got, I want a family shoot, you know, the first thing I would say is fantastic. So how many people do you have? How many people will we be photographing? And say, so, oh, there's four of us. I say, okay, great. So tell me a little bit about the people. Okay, so it's my, you know, my husband, me, and I've got two children. Great, so what are the children's ages? And she must have got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Okay, boys or girls, one of each. What are their names? And then I would always focus on the youngest child because in my experience, what I've found is that the youngest child usually is the one that requires the most attention and they're still spending most of their time with. So it's easier for them to talk about the youngest child. I think a lot of photographers going, okay, so what were you thinking for the shoot? And that sort of question, the clients don't know how to answer. But clients love talking about their kids. And most people, especially if they have children under five, believe that their child does something that no other two-year-old can do. And we need to know and find out what that is. Their friends are over hearing about it. And so they can't talk to their friends about it anymore. But we want to be capturing something that they believe is special. So we've given it the context. And then we need to ask them, okay, so, you know, maybe the context is when he's alone in a room 
just playing beautifully by himself, what would he be doing? And then as he's playing in a room all by himself, what is it that you love the most when you walk past that door and you just can't help but stop and watch him? What is it that you love the most about that moment? What are some of those expressions that you love the most as he's doing whatever he's doing? And what does it mean to you? And this is a big one. What does it mean to you to have this little boy in your life right now? Because once you start to have these sorts of conversations, Nigel, the clients really have to take a valuable look at, the, at what they have in front of them. And in a lot of cases, and in some cases, they're lying to you and they're making it up because they've never stopped to look. Yet there's this two-year-old that's been, you know, reaching out, wanting attention either at the dinner table or, you know, as they are playing by themselves. And we haven't stopped to look for quite a long time because life is busy. And when we begin to answer that, the clients pretend they know the answer, but then we realize when we do the second excitement call and they're so excited about, do you know what we were talking about when he was in a room? Well, I stopped and I looked and guess what he was doing? Something completely different to what they imagined he was doing previously. And they're really beginning to get in touch with the reality again. And that's a gift. So I think part of the biggest asset that a photographer needs to have is a belief that everybody Every single person has a hidden treasure inside them. And as photographers, photographers give us the permission to become archaeologists of emotion. And we need to stand up for our clients and we need to know that there's a treasure somewhere in there. And in some cases, we need to dig a little bit harder to get to the treasure. But when we get to it, it's just amazing knowing that it's there the whole time. And for others, it's a little bit easier. But in every single case, there will be a hidden treasure somewhere in there. And I think a lot of the times when I read the forums, you, you can sort of see where the clients are going. But we haven't or we've, we've given up and we've made it all about us and, our, and how we feel rather than focusing on the client. You know, that captures something that I have seen over and over and over again in my own experience. And I never really thought about it in the kind of detail that you just described. And it would go something like this. I would have a photography session with, say, a child, um, not a toddler, but maybe somebody who's seven, eight, or even, you know, maybe a, a teenager. Yep. I would talk with them before we started photographing, try to put them at their ease, let them know that this was going to be a fun experience and all that kind of thing. Kind of try and little, sort of bond with them a little bit. But you can't tell them that, can you, Nigel? You can't. They have to experience that experience before you photograph right what would happen would be I, I would say to them now at some point during the session something's going to happen something really magical you're going to do something totally naturally that I will see and every single time it would happen the child would be a little bit nervous at first they'd be trying to figure out how to pose and do stuff and then all of a sudden they would just fall into this natural way of being them if you like and they would do something that i would know instinctively this is them this is how they they naturally behave and i would get it and when the parents saw the photographs they would say how did you know to capture that i remember seeing them do that a long time ago and yet in reality the kids probably been doing it every day they have my question to you is what if they had that experience to a three weeks before you physically photograph them and got to experience their child mm. doing all of that beforehand and and this is what you know what needs to happen is that they need to begin to experience each other before the shoot because by the time they get to the shoot they're so excited and my clients most of my clients do have an issue with their clients in the fact that they turn up early mm -hmm. every single session and some of them are turning up an hour or an hour and a half early which they just need to be prepared for but it's because they're so excited and everybody turns up with everything that they need we are as an industry so focused on blaming we blame the economy we blame other photographers we blame digital we blame pricing we blame our clients for not, you know, not being prepared and not understanding us as an artist and not valuing us. But how much value are we giving to our clients before they turn up? There's so much talk on the forums about pricing. I don't feel I'm charging enough. My clients should respect me enough. I should be able to charge more. It's not about charging more. It's about how much value, true value, are you giving them? Because people will only pay for what they believe. When there's a value proposition, they got to feel as though they've got way and above more value than, than what they're paying for. So if the clients have experienced that, all of those feelings before you physically photograph them and it 
and it hasn't just happened by chance on the shoot. They've experienced that and you've brought them together and they're really connecting before the photographic experience, before the photographic shoot starts. Then their expectation of what they're going to want as artwork before that you physically take a photo, most of the clients that we speak to know or believe that they're going to be spending fifteen hundred, two, three, four thousand dollars even before we've taken a photo because they've had that experience leading up to the photographic shoot. And that's one of the things that, that has to happen is the clients need to be able to visualize what's happening. We need to have an understanding of their home, where it's going, what type of furniture they have in their home, so that way we can recommend the perfect product for them. So going back to your question, you know, the successful photographers that I train are able to, to quote them on one product that they believe is going to work for them. Sending a price list doesn't work because most people don't believe any of it's relevant to them. So in most cases, if you're lucky, they will read the cheapest product you have, but not believing that any of any of the rest of it is relative to them because we haven't taken them on that journey. Whereas if you take them through an excitement call and go through those steps and find out about, they've, they've visualized this child's fingertips holding the blocks and how gentle he is and then that look of pride um, as he's showing you his finished piece and that beautiful smile that he has you know, just as it's centered over the, over the blocks and those, how he, he's smiling with his eyes at you and they've seen this series if you then quote them $1,500 for a series of a canvas collection on their wall, then they totally believe that that's what they're going to be buying. And they will be. In reality, they will probably buy multiples of canvases because they'll want that one and then they'll, they still haven't bought their family photo. Um, and in most cases, they'll also buy a portrait box or an album. In a lot of cases, we'll also, you know, a lot of them haven't had photographs of themselves as a couple. So they'll also buy another canvas collection of that. So it's very easy to get to that five, $6,000 mark if you do it right. You mentioned these excitement calls. I don't know if that's just a difference in terminology, you know, from Australia to the US. I've not heard of them referred to as excitement calls in the past. Is that the first call that you have with a potential client or is this something that you schedule with them at some point after you make that initial contact with them? Where does this fit in? What does it really mean? Excitement call is a term that I made up. Most people call it an inquiry in Australia and I'm assuming it's the same in, in the US. But it really is my assessment of what that call should be. So if you're in a mindset of doing an inquiry, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? If I say to you, okay, we're going to do an inquiry now. I've just got a call for you. It's so-and-so is inquiring about a photo shoot. What runs through your mind? It's all things like when, who, how many, where, will they, won't they, how can I make them? <laughs> <laughs> all that kind of thing. I don't want to be pushy. Should I push them? And a lot of people have, um, what objections are they going to throw at me? Oh, I'll brace myself. I'm not sure whether I'm ready for this now psychologically. Just tell them I'll call them back because I just need to, you know, check my list of objections. Whereas I say to you, hey, uh, there's a Joanna on the phone. You need to do an excitement call with her. What runs through your mind? No, it's all emotional based. It comes from a very different perspective. I'm not sitting there thinking, if I get halfway through the call and I feel like she's a good fit, but... But I don't think she's going to be able to afford me. What kind of a discount can I offer her to give her an extra push or stuff like that? Now I'm thinking in terms of what can I learn about them? How can I get them emotionally involved in the desire to create these photographs? for their family that are going to mean a heck of a lot more than just a bunch of snapshots. Absolutely. So your goal has completely shifted from almost being attacked to you're now giving something to someone in that you're trying to impart excitement because you love what you do so much that you want to get them excited about A, themselves, B, their family, and how we can then translate that into wall art for them. So the goal is very different. And when the goals are very different, so are the outcomes. Even in your tonality, when I was listening to you describe the differences, the tonality in your voice when you were talking about um, the excitement call was much more upbeat. It was much more connected. Even though you weren't talking to somebody, it would be even more connected if you were talking to, to somebody about it. Whereas when you were talking about an inquiry, it was almost like it was a lot of negative sort of stuff. Mm, yeah. So that also translates to creating great clients for your business because you've taken it as a positive and you've taken it as a mission to excite somebody about what you do. And that's really what we're about. So an excitement call is something that my mentoring clients use, people that are in my membership, and they're using that sort of language. And even in our closed group for our members, 
and they're getting great results. We have people that weren't able to book anybody and suddenly, you know, they're booking people in, into their business. They also have product they'd never had product to sell. You know, previously they were lucky to make a $150, $200 sale, whereas now they're, they're doing threes, fives. We had a, a one for $7,000 yesterday as well. So people are rewarding us for giving them great service and giving them great value. And it's about adding value to people. One of the things that people come back at me with when I say, well, before you start talking about prices, we with your prospects because they're always going to ask that question about well how much is it how much do you charge how much is a wall portrait how, how much is the wedding before you get into that you have to establish the value in their mind of what they're going to get and I, I use an analogy of a set of scales so on one side you've got value and on the other side you have price well if you can pile up as much as you can on the value side before you hit them with price then it's going to all the value will always out way what they're paying for it but if you let price out of the gate too soon it's going to tip the scales it the wrong way and all of a sudden now you're in a sort of a running uphill kind of situation where you're trying to essentially push water up a hill it's important when they say well yeah but what do you mean by value so uh, do, do you mean well you're going to get a 16 by 20 and a 30 by 40 print and a book of this and a book of that and a bunch of prints and oh you'll get a slideshow for this and a facebook image and something else and how much is all that worth no that's not what i mean by value and i'm sure that's probably not what you mean either it's more the the intangible values, the, the, the sentimental stuff, the emotional things, the things that make them realize and reconnect back with their own family members, as you described earlier on. That's the value. I totally am with you on that. Can I add one extra thing? Absolutely. I also believe that unless you understand and know what the client wants and you've taken them on a journey through the excitement call, it's not possible for you to give them a price in that if you give them a price straight up, you're actually lying to them. And I don't think we should be lying to our clients. If a client rings up and says, well, you know, how much is an 8x10? And you tell them, okay, you've told them how much an 8x10 is, but then because they haven't realized the journey and they haven't realized what they're actually going to want and what's going to work for them, they've come in thinking they're going to spend however much an 8x10 is, $50, $100, $200. Some people sell them for $300. It depends on your pricing structure, where, where that price point is. But to lie to them and allow them to leave the conversation believing that they're going to buy an 8x10 and worse still, bamboozling them with your entire price list is really creating smokes and mirrors and not really serving the clients. We need to, in my opinion, take them on this journey, get them to see what they love, get them to describe their home, what sort of furniture they have, where they would love to place it and display their artwork in their home. And then from there, say to them, look, you know, I would recommend one of our premium, whatever it is, a canvas set or, or a metal collection. And for that, you're looking at only $2,000 or $1,500, whatever it is. Most people are really proud of their home. And a lot of the times, if you've taken them on this journey really, really well, they will want to proud display artwork on their walls. If they're saying to you, oh no, I just want a desk portrait, you haven't really hit the nerve or found the treasure yet. You may have found just a few pebbles sitting on the surface that you think is the treasure, but you haven't actually gone deep enough or really found out what they value in themselves and their family. Because 99% of people that were coming to my studios and the same goes for the clients that are implementing all of the strategies um, are all walking out with art, artwork for their walls because we found what's valuable and they have on the phone being quoted multiple times I recommend that you quote them on three separate occasions on three separate phone calls and remind them of you know this you know it's only going to be however, however much you quote that that to be um, $1,500 seems to be an, an average for, for what somebody can hang over a three-seater couch and and in their mind, they're buying multiples of that before they've even come in the door. It's about seeing the value in your client. And I think that a lot of the times photographers feel like they're pushing their clients because what they're doing is they're pushing my value as a photographer and how amazing I am onto our clients. Whereas I'm working from the other way in seeing the value of your clients and adding value to their lives and getting them to see how valuable their relationships are. It should be a given that we're great at taking photos because most people are not seeking photography in my mind because they don't believe they're worth it and they don't believe they're valuable enough to be spending money on themselves to this level on photography because nobody sees them anyway and they've spent much of their life 
not being seen and not being heard. And there's people out there that are, are screaming and crying to be seen and to be heard and validated. And if we can give that gift to them, we've validated them, we've given them value. So I, I just want to make it clear that the value's got to come from the client and adding value to the client, not that we should be pushing our value and how wonderful we are and how many awards we've won and what an amazing photographer I am. It's got to be from the other the other way. We have to get rid of all of those preconceptions, if you like, about the way that we do business. If I had to put this in a nutshell, essentially what you're saying is that as photographers, we help to restore people's self-worth and their own sense of value. Yes, photography is a tool that gives us permission to access people and to access that ability to add that value and give and, and allow people to feel validated. You know, we've had so many people that have come to my studio that they've brought their teenage daughters in and by the time they've been through the whole experience, their mums are coming back weeks later with cakes and, and presents for my team and, and myself because we've changed her confidence and we've changed her outlook on who she is. She's got new friends. She's made, you know, gotten rid of bad friends and is totally a different person because of the experience. And that's what we want for our clients. We want them to grow from the experience. It's not about extracting money. Yes, the money's important, but the money will come if we add the value and if we see value in our clients. And it's our job as artists to see more in them than they've ever seen in themselves. Because if we don't believe in them, who will? I'm sure that photographers listening to this, while they're picking up the pieces of their minds that have been blown by all of this amazing stuff, are thinking to themselves, well, look, come on, guys, do we need a script to do this kind of a phone call? You know, I could probably right. get through the first couple of questions, but this is so different to what I'm used to. How do I get good at this? What do I have to do? My business partner said this once to me, and it's stuck in my head forever, is that when was the last time you needed a script to talk to your best friend? So we need to realize and understand where these people are coming from. And when you think about, and this probably relates more to women than it does for guys, but when you, you think about your best friend, women see it a lot more, is that we see so much more in them than they ever see in themselves. Like it's almost like we know they have so much more potential and we can see all this opportunity for them. But because they're living in their own body and they never step out to look in, they don't see what's amazing about themselves. And I think one of the biggest mistakes photographers make is to ask somebody about themselves and what they would like and what their personality is like. We're conditioned not to talk about ourselves, but we're highly programmed to talk about other people. So the best trick or the best piece of advice when I, uh, for, for people that are worried about picking up the phone and engaging in an, in an excitement call is to get them to talk about somebody other than themselves because it's really easy for them to do that. But if you start the conversation with, so what do you want from your photo shoot? Tell me about your personality. What would you love to have? People struggle looking inside themselves. I had that happen to me when I was first doing wedding photography and I didn't know one end of wedding photography from the other back then, you know, I was uh, pretty clueless and I, I would talk to potential clients on the phone and looking back on that time now in the light of all the stuff that we've talked about today, you know, I can see why so many of those early conversations were kind of awkward and difficult and <laughs> I felt like I was pushing against a brick wall, you know, you'd ask somebody what you thought was a fairly intelligent question and you get back. Uh, 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 well, I don't really know. And well, what do you want out of your, what are you looking for in your photographer for you? You know, oh, I don't know, some pretty pictures, I guess. Who is that really about? Exactly. It's about me. It's not about them. So they're not there for you. They want to know what you can do for them. I think probably about a year or so ago, I flew to Chicago and met up with somebody that I was mentoring. I wanted to sit at the studio and just see how relevant everything was to the US. And I'm hoping Chicago is sort of uh, representative of some of the population. And he apologized profusely because Saturday he had three wedding interviews. I'm like, that's that's so exciting that clients are coming. He goes, oh, but you know, we're meant to do some training. I said, no, this will be great. We can do it with the clients. He goes, oh, I've got these couple of, they're, you know, she, she got pregnant. So they're basically being forced to get married. So, you know, that won't be a good one. He was making all these excuses as to why he wouldn't book any of them. So I said, awesome. 
Awesome. So I'm going to sit in, on, in with you. I'll just sit in the corner and I'll try not to say anything. I just want to sort of observe what happens. And of course, I didn't do that at all because he was still sort of, well, the clients arrived, arrived a little bit early. So I whizzed out and met and greet them and introduced him and sat down. So look, I hope you don't mind. I'm from Australia and I just want to come and see what it's like to have a wedding. And they're like, oh my God, that's so exciting. So they bought into the whole experience and we basically did an excitement call. Well, he was doing a wedding interview, which I don't know. It just felt like two scared people coming to an interview. Whereas I then interrupted and just did an excitement type call with them and just found out about them. And, you know, we talked about how they hadn't had an opportunity to really get to know each other. And I suggested, look, I think we should be doing a, a forever session or, a, or what you call an engagement session. So that way we can discover who you are to each other. What is it about Nigel, let's just use your name, <laughs> that, you know, you absolutely, if there was one thing that totally described what Nigel means to you, what would it be? And she looked at me and then looked at him and said, you know what? Nobody's ever asked me that question. And he said, well, I don't even know what you like about me. We haven't had time. And it just started this conversation between the two of them and I think within the next three or four minutes they were in tears hugging each other and totally sharing stuff that they hadn't had the opportunity to share with each other yet and learning about themselves. Now, we've changed their lives. We've changed their relationship. And that's what it's all about. Now, that day, we booked every single person that walked in the door because of what we did. Now, one of them, we didn't book for the wedding because they felt that what we gave was so authentic and so amazing that they would be willing to spend $6,000 on the engagement shoot. And they booked that with us. And they said, for the wedding, really? We're just doing this to please our parents. And the wedding has turned into what mum wants, what dad wants wants, what my mother-in-law wants, my uncle's coming into town, so we have to consider what they want. And the wedding really is not going to be authentically us. So we're going to book somebody cheaper for the wedding, but we'd love, we're going to do the engagement shoot. And they did spend about $7,000 on their engagement shoot because they felt that the level of service and how we were treating them and, and looking at them authentically was more valuable to have that forever session um, because it really is them forever. And it's the last opportunity that they will have as a couple before they get married to still be two individuals that are fusing together. Once you do this, you know exactly what you're shooting. You're not firing a machine gun and hoping that you're going to capture something that's, that they love. We know exactly what they want. So the shoots become quite shorter. It's amazing if we open our mind to the fact that the people we have in front of us, no matter who we have judged them to be, they do have a story. And if we believe that and know that and give them the opportunity to experience it, people will pay for that experience and reward you for enriching their lives and changing their lives. Well, Steve, this has been absolutely incredible. And we're going to have to have you back to talk about the other part of this whole process, at the other end where the actual in-person presentations take place and you actually do the sales. But I think if people take the time to go back and listen to this several times so that they can really absorb all of the nuances of the information that you've shared here, I think it will literally be life-changing and certainly business changing for portrait and wedding photographers, you know, anyone who deals with photographing people. Certainly for portraits and weddings, I think this is absolutely like gold dust. It is, it, it is so, so valuable. And Steve, thank you so much for being so generous with your time and your knowledge and expertise. And I'm so looking forward to having you back for part two of this. Thank you, Nigel.